Welcome to Pack Talk Podcast, episode 84. It's been 84 episodes. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. Close it's to 100. Close to 100. Mm-hmm. Almost there. And today we're talking about preventing injuries in dogs and yourself. And what to do if there is an injury. Because even if you do as much as you can to prevent an injury, they could still happen. And I have a lot of experience with injuries yeah, you do. myself uh-huh. and in my dogs because of mistakes I've made. And uh, so today's just a really good discussion on learning from some of those lessons learned and uh, hopefully sharing with you, the listener, on what you can do to try and prevent injuries in your dogs, in yourself, in your family, your loved ones, maybe your cats. Yep. You know, the uh, Cat's Mind episode is still one of the top five of all times. I mean, just ironic. From listeners. We're talking training company, the Cat's <laughs> episode, one of the best ones we got. Cat's Mind is still in the top five. A lot of good information in there. Though. Good info. Yeah. So, talking about injuries, injuries can cause a lot of pain and discomfort to your dog and to you if you're the one getting injured. Or, they can cause you discomfort if your dog's injured mm-hmm. because you have to take extra protocols, you know, to help your dog in those situations. Injuries can also cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Depending on the injury itself and what all is happening, which can impact your financial situation, whether or not you were prepared for some kind of uh, injury or, you know, emergency type situation, it can still impact your finances. Because just because we're financially prepared for an emergency doesn't mean that we want, you know, to expend a couple thousand dollars on an emergency. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, injuries can also have an effect on your dog's health and their body, maybe for a longer, uh, term period than initially expected. Same thing for you. If you have an injury can have a longer term effect on your body, your health, right? Overall. Yeah. So preventing injuries is not a one-sided approach. You know, you can't just take one aspect to preventing injuries. You got to look at it from multiple angles, multiple sides. So today, the goal is to make you aware of some common injuries in dogs and some things you can do to prevent them as best as possible. But like we said earlier, just do keep in mind and understand that even with preventative measures, some injuries can and still will happen. So what do we do? If an injury does occur, we have to do our best to properly overcome it. We have to keep our mind right and we need to make our weak points our strong points. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to talk about that today. But I'd say, you know, out of all the injury, I've seen a lot of injuries in dogs. I'd say three of the most common injuries in dogs that I've seen myself. One is like an ACL tear, Mm -hmm. you know, in their leg, which is super prominent in like pity breed dogs or very muscly dogs. They have a lot of muscle. Yeah. And when they're moving at fast speeds dynamically, you know, changing uh, the direction that they're running. Uh, that's common when the ACL could tear for some reason it puts that ligament into some type of position which puts it into a good place to tear and so most commonly I think it happens with pet dogs when playing fetch so kind of the best practice to avoid that injury when playing fetch since, since it's the most common scenario for most pet owners is to have your dog run in a straight line yeah you know if you throw your ball for the dog throw it in a straight line Try not to make it bounce all over the place, mm-hmm. right? Because the more dynamic movement it, there is, the more zigzag running there is, the more prone that uh, ligament, the ACL, is going to tear, right? Yeah. Possibly yeah. tear. So keep Thanks. that in mind uh, when you're playing fetch with your dog. But that is a super common injury, yeah. <clears throat> especially with like muscly dogs. Mm-hmm. The other, the next common injury that I've seen is like a back or a hip injury. And it's common with like extremely active dogs, you know what I'm saying, that are running a lot, uh, moving a lot, all that kind of stuff. So chiropractic care can be a really good benefit for prevention and recovery of this type of injury in addition to deliberately doing mobility work with your dog. And I just want to say my personal dog chiropractor for my dogs is Dr. Rob Lazota of uh, Lazota Animal Chiropractic in the South Carolina Low Country, and he will come to your house. Um, he's trained. He's done a bunch of our alumni dogs as well. Right, but he's that got, 
you got some funny stories. With yeah, him he's got too. some funny he, stories. Too. He, you got some funny experiences yeah. with him with uh, Bane. Oh right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. He comes out. He has a good time. Yeah, he's coming on the podcast at some point. Yeah, but you know, chiropractic care can be good for prevention of an injury, and if there is an injury, you can use it to your advantage, right? Uh, to try and minimize effects of that injury and help recovery of that injury. Yeah. Um, and then we have eye injuries. You know, I've seen these quite a bit with dogs and they can, ca- they can be caused by stress. They can be caused by pressure on the dog. Environmental factors can play an effect on this, like heat, maybe a combination of things. So properly managing your dog's stress level, being aware of the environment that you're having your dog in. These are all critical steps for injury prevention around eyes, you know, and eyes tend to be super fragile. Some dogs mm-hmm. have like run into things. Oh, yeah. So trying to keep your dog, so trying to be mm-hmm. aware of what your dog's running into, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's other injuries too, obviously. They could be like ligament problems, ligament injuries, joint problems, punctures, whether that be like a dog biting a dog and puncturing the other one or a dog falling and getting a stick shoved into the side of their body or something like that Mm. which has happened you know uh ankle or toe injuries you know dogs can mess up those things too so there's a bunch of different injuries that could happen so how can we prevent them right how can we be mindful of potential injuries and take action to try to not allow them to happen as much as possible right Right. Mm -hmm. so um, let's talk about prevention and you know the preventative measures we're going to talk about In regards to dogs, they also apply to people. So think about your dog. Think about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So number one is don't let social pressure affect your decisions. So you've probably heard the statement to listen to your body. You got to listen to your body. You need to listen to your dog's body, which obviously you're not in your dog's body. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, that means paying attention to your dog, paying attention to how they're moving, how they're walking. Is there anything out of the ordinary with your dog? Maybe there's a slight limp. Maybe they're laying down more than they used to, more than they normally do. Uh, Maybe you need to take it easy on them and let their body recover. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one thing that a lot of us don't do is we don't let our dogs recover from things that we did with them. We don't let ourselves recover from things that we did to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And with humans, social pressure is probably more effective on us than it is our dogs. Yeah. Because if our friends want to go do this, go do that, Mm -hmm. we keep pushing ourselves, pushing ourselves, pushing ourselves, whatever the activity is. At a certain point, we're more prone to injury because we're not letting our body recover. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, If your body is feeling off, you probably need to let it rest a little bit. That's a good point. Let's say you have some friends or people that want you to come exercise with them, or maybe you have a bunch of friends that want to take their dogs out to play and run around at a park or at a friend's house or whatever. This might not be the best idea for your dog until they recover, until they recover from the minor injury. So if your dog is slightly limping, it could be a minor sprain Mm -hmm. that could heal itself with proper rest and recovery. Yeah. But if you don't allow your dog to rest, Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you don't force your dog to rest, mm-hmm. right? Cause your dog might be wanting to do stuff anyway. Yeah, and yeah. you know that, Hey, I need this dog to rest. I need it to uh, recover a little bit, which means maybe you put them on the spot command more than usual yeah. throughout the day. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't do that, the <clears throat> minor sprain could turn into something more serious. Mm-hmm. Now you need surgery. Now there's months of recovery going on, yeah. you know? So I would say just do yourself and your dog a favor And uh, don't let social pressure affect your decisions when you know that your gut is telling you that either you or your dog need to rest and recover, Mm -hmm. you know? So again, going back to the friend group, maybe you have a bunch of friends, you all like to get together with your dogs, let your dogs run around together, have fun at the uh, doggy water park or at the dog park or at the dog beach or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you know that there's something off with your dog, maybe you need to take a little bit of break and not do that for a few weeks or something yeah. so your dog can completely recover, right? That's funny you say that because I just, it's not an injury, but I remember when I got Ara spayed as a puppy mm-hmm. and she's very energetic. Mm-hmm. That they like give, they tell you X amount of time to rest. Mm-hmm. And since she's energetic, like after like the first day or two, she was ready to get after it. Right. And she was not fully healed up. You got to force her. You got to force her to heal. Yeah. 
and you kind of feel bad. It's like I know you're ready to get after it or just right. go have fun, but it's like need you to need you to sit here and chill out, you right. know, for a couple more days. And but, training um, helps you do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. training definitely helps you do that. But even if you don't have training, maybe use a kennel or something. Yeah, it's better to let your dog rest than make a problem worse. Yeah, you know, definitely. with the spay, for example. If she were to be super active, tear a stitch out or something like that, mm -hmm. now potential infection. Yeah. Now more problems. And more money. More money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. More time that she can't be running around. Exactly. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. think about the long term in that case. Mm -hmm. But let's say, you know, as with everything we we're going to talk about today, there's a balance, right? So let's say that you're trying to work out yourself. You're, you're liking to work out. Maybe you run, maybe you lift weights, whatever. But let's say you're going to do your workout and your body is just super sluggish, not cooperating with you, and it's abnormal, right? Mm -hmm. We all, when we wake up, we're kind of sluggish or whatever. Maybe after lunch and then the middle of the afternoon, you're a little groggy or mm -hmm. sluggish, but yeah. that's kind of like normal. Yeah. But maybe there's an abnormal sluggishness. Maybe that means your body needs some extra rest. Maybe not. Right. So there's a dichotomy here that you have to carefully balance because there's times and there could be a lot of times where your body's trying to tell you something like you don't need to exercise. You don't need to train, yeah. you know, your body could tell you it's too early, right? Yeah. You need more sleep, <laughs> right? You've worked hard this week. Just sit down, yeah. watch some TV. Yeah. You've been busting your ass this week. Take some time and relax. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Your body tell you that before? Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> Love those conversations. Yeah. Your body's telling you, you don't need to exercise. You don't need to train. Mm -hmm. You know, usually this is a trap. Mm -hmm. Your body is trying to default be lazy. Yeah. Right? Which is not going to help you. Yeah. And in these cases, you have to mentally push through it and just get to what you need to do, get what needs to be done, done. Exercise your dog, train your dog, exercise yourself. But then there's times that you actually need more rest and yeah. you need to listen to that. Yeah. So it's about having that ability to make a good judgment call, balance that dichotomy mm -hmm. and say, hey, I have been working hard. I do need some more rest or, hey, this is bullshit. I don't need more rest. Yeah, I actually yeah, yeah. need to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things you got to figure out for yourself. Yeah. Something that only you can determine because you're the one in control of your body and your dog. Doesn't mean abuse it, though. Doesn't mean abuse it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Doesn't mean abuse it, but yeah, definitely know yourself, know your dog. Right. For sure, for both situations. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, so good to go there. The next step or the next uh, point is to understand what a normal response to a stimuli like exercise is and what a non-normal response is. So when you work out, there's going to be a level of discomfort that comes from your workout itself and your body must repair that in order to grow and get better. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you like to lift weights, mm -hmm. you know that if you get a good workout in the purpose of that workout is to tear down your muscles a little bit. So that means you're going to be a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Whoever, who, leg who, day, anybody, right. I was about <laughs> to say who out there has done leg day. Literally me on Monday. You do I'm leg still, day. I'm still sore. Right, you yeah. do leg day the next day, the day after that, the day after that. Day two is the worst. You're going to be sore. Yeah, day two is It's going to hurt day. to walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's normal for yeah. that situation. Yeah. Same thing with your dog. If you do like a uh, strenuous activity, like if you take your dog on a hard walk or like a hike one day, there's going to be some discomfort most likely from that bout of exercise with your dog. Mm -hmm. Your dog's going to need to recover from that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? This doesn't mean that your dog's injured. Maybe you do like a long, intense hike one day. Then two days later, your dog's kind of sluggish, kind of, you know, lumping around a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's necessarily injured. It could just be a little bit uncomfortable from that crazy hike and the body's recovering. Yeah. So we talked earlier about listening to your gut, you know, and it's better to play it safe and take a little bit easy versus pushing your dog super hard many days in a row that could cause an injury cause an actual injury yeah right so again there's a balance here don't necessarily hold yourself back uh you have to make a judgment call as to what to do right mm -hmm. is there ability for me to keep doing exercise training more strenuous <laughs> or do i need to tone it back a little bit yeah do some more rest and recovery yeah you know so i have a quick story in this regard Many years ago, it's like summer months. The temperature is like upper 90s. You know, there's humidity. It's sunny. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Yeah. Right? 
I had been working my dog Bane many, many days in a row. I was doing protection sessions every day. I was playing fetch every day. I was walking him every day, doing other training sessions every day. So I'm doing a lot of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then one day in, in that series of days, I decided to take him with me on a five mile walk with some other dogs that I was training. Mm. These other dogs were not doing the number of sessions that he was doing, yeah. not the most strenuous ones. Like they might be doing some basic training, basic walking, but they're not doing protection, fetch, walking and other stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we all went out on a walk. Everything was fine that day. Right. I went to bed like normal. I woke up the next morning like normal. It's around 4.30 a.m. I'm about to go to the gym. And normally he'd get up with me before I would like leave and I'd let him out to go to the bathroom, let him back in the house. He'd go back to bed. You know what I'm saying? But on this day, he didn't at all. He just laid there in the bed. Um, so after a few minutes, I'm like, okay, let's go. I got to let you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he just didn't move mm. at all. Right. And so I'm starting to freak out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he never ever tries to not go outside whenever I can let him outside. Yeah. So I'm immediately going to him. I'm like freaking out, mm -hmm. you know, putting my hand on him. He's, he's feeling stiff. Mm. He's feeling cold. And I'm like immediately thinking he's dead. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I'm yeah. like crying. I'm freaking, I'm yelling. Yeah. You know, I'm yelling his name. Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't move at all. And I'm like, he's dead. He's dead. What the hell just happened? Right. And, uh, finally I hear like a small whimper from him. You know, like he's making like a small whimper, not a loud whimper. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> sure, sure. And uh, so I'm like crying and stuff, and I'm glad to hear him whimpering. And I could tell that he was trying to move, but he just couldn't move his body at all. Mm. Uh, so I basically just picked him up, all 110 pounds of him, yeah. you know, mm. carry him out to my truck, put him in my truck, take him straight to the ER vet. We get there. Once the doctor sees us, they immediately put an IV in him they immediately give one of those humps on his back, you yeah, know, where the they, water hump. Yeah, yeah, they put the water hump where the fluid can go into their body later. Anyway, after about 30 minutes, he was starting to act normal again. And the doctor just basically said that he had suffered from severe dehydration. Dang. And so basically I overworked him, Dang. you know, yeah. and I wasn't tracking his fluids, wasn't mm -hmm. making sure that he was getting enough fluids in. Yeah. So I learned a valuable lesson in that situation. And then ever since then, I've always focused on ensuring that he gets proper hydration, that they're not being overworked and that, you know, I'm monitoring that constantly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So definitely something to take away from that, you know, which we'll talk more about here in a little bit is keeping track of your dog. You know, how, what are they doing to recover themselves? Are they, are they drinking water themselves? Are they getting enough electrolytes? You yeah. know? Like I've put Pedialyte and dog water before to help them get enough electrolytes in their body, help them recover, yeah. you know, which is good for them as well as it is for us. Right. So anyway, just lesson learned there. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Scary situation. I know. Yeah. Learning lesson as well. Yeah. You know. Um, next point is uh, to make training and exercise as safe as possible in the prevention of injury, right? So we want to minimize all potential risks that could be present. For example, like we just talked about, if it's a hot day, you're walking your dog, maybe you need to walk less than normal in order to prevent heat injuries yeah. or muscle strains, Yeah, you know, um, also hydration, like yeah. we already talked about with the Bane story, mm -hmm. but following a proper, a proper training progression, following proper training steps so that you're minimizing any type of pressure that your dog may need in their training. You know, you can refer to pack talk podcast episode 28 about our training steps, but you know, following a proper progression, not rushing the process, right? Minimizing all potential risks to your dog that could create injury is going to be your key to success to preventing injury. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you're working out yourself, be safe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Use workout equipment properly, you know, check your ego at all times. If you go to the gym, yeah. And you're a dude, for example, gym bros calling you out. You know what I'm saying? You go to the gym, <laughs> yeah. you're working out. There's a dude next to you. He's lifting maybe 10 pounds more than you are. What are you going to, what are you going to do? You put 10 more pounds on there. Yeah, you're going right? to, you're going to match that weight. Yeah, you're going to match yeah. it. You're going to try and put more on there. Yeah. You know, to show this guy up. A little lift off. <laughs> well, uh, but I'm when you do that, up. you know, your ego's coming into play yeah. and you're probably using improper form yeah. and you're probably not ready for that weight and <laughs> you're probably, probably going to injure yourself. 
Oh, right. <laughs> You're gonna get how a hernia. How's this dude doing this work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Gonna get a hernia. Yeah. Oh, real quick, <laughs> real quick story on that. You know, many, many years ago, before I became aware of like injuries, mm -hmm. like real injuries, and how they can affect you, I'm in the gym. Here I'm doing, go. I'm doing bench press. Yeah. It's in the morning. It's always the bench. There's a guy that walks in. Later, this guy would <laughs> I've become. Heard this story. Later, this guy would become my friend. But at the yeah. time, he was not my friend. He was some random dude. Right. His name's Greg, mm -hmm. and uh, he walks in. He gets the bench next to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm benching mm -hmm. and he's, uh, starting to bench and then he puts, you know, 225 on, I'm benching 185. Right. So I'm like, Psh, I'm putting 225 on. Yeah. So I put, who is this dude? Who's he think he is? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's Greg. Blues. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's benching 225. I'm benching 225. He puts, uh, you know, tens on each side. And so I'm like, I'm putting tens on each side. <laughs> so this continues yeah. for like a while. And we're not saying anything to each other. We're just doing our thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, you know, I get to the point where I can't do anymore. He's yeah. obviously stronger than me or whatever. Yeah. And so I'm just like, oh, I'm done benching. Uh, you know, I act uh, like I'm done with yeah, it. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And uh, not good. Not good to let your ego come into play like that. So mm -hmm. check your ego when you're in the gym. Use your equipment properly. Don't lift your weights in an improper form. Yeah. You know, just because you want to lift more weight, you know, when me and Greg were at that bench off that we didn't even know, we maybe, I don't know what he was yeah. thinking at that time, <laughs> you know, but to me it was a bench off, right? Mm -hmm. So don't lift weight improperly just because you want to be able to lift more weight yeah. or seem like someone else in the gym, yeah. right? Use strict form, use your full range of motion, develop your strength over time yeah. and take your time. I got a I got a quick funny story as well. I don't think I've told you this. It mm -hmm. happened like two weeks ago. Was it with Jake? No, 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 no. It was me bench pressing as well. But it was not an ego checkoff mm -hmm. with the dude next to me. It was, dude, I was in the gym doing bench. By yourself? By myself, mm -hmm. which is normal for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I know what weight I'm normally around. So I just calibrate from there. What's you know? that? What weight are you normally around? 165 is generally where I'm at for your reps, right? I weigh 160. All right. So everyone out there like saying that's lightweight, <laughs> you know, come on, give me a little break here. So it's just, a, you know, a plate on each side and like a 10, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. or so it's like 155 or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm like jacked up on caffeine. Mm. So I'm like feeling good. Mm. And I'm like going to the bench. I do, I do the, the 135, right? The, mm -hmm. the plates. I'm like, I'm feeling good. That's your you warm up. Know? That's my warm up. Yeah. I'm like I'm feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, put my tens on, I rep that for like eight. Normally, normally it's like my like heavyweight, mm. you know? So mm -hmm. I do eight. I'm like, oh yeah, mm. we're, we're lifting today. <laughs> and so I'm like, let's do another set. And then I do another set of the same weight and do eight reps again. And mm. I'm like, today's the day I'm mm. breaking my record, you know, mm. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, just for like normal lifting. So you put 225 on. Nah, so I, I just <laughs> literally, I put, uh. Let's see, it was 165 I was doing at the time. And then I went up to 175. So I put two fives on. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, this is the most I've done for like multiple reps. Because mm. I've maxed before, but only like yeah. run one rep max. Yeah. So I'm going yeah. for like six or eight here. Yeah. I'm like pushing. Yeah. I'm like doing a couple reps. I'm feeling good. Yeah. And I, l I lower the bar down slowly to touch my chest. And I'm like trying to feel the stretch in my pecs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, want to feel it. And mm -hmm. then I like touch my chest and I'm like going up slow because mm. I'm like, I want to feel the burn. Mm. And I'm like pushing up and then I'm like, Argh! and then <laughs> just drops back on my chest. <laughs> and the gym's full of people. And I got two guys on each side of me doing their bench. And I'm just got the, be the, the bar on my chest. I'm looking around, look at the guy to my right. They're working out. They got the earphones and they're not looking at me. Oh, I look at them to my left and uh that dude's working out and got his earphones so no one's paying attention oh to me. my god and i'm like oh shit i gotta like get someone's attention so i was about to shout at the dude next to me <laughs> but then i look forward over the bench in front of me and the stick's still on me and there's this like old jack dude doing oh, leg right. press and he oh, look, yeah. he's just like casually standing around looking around and then he looks at me and he sees me and i was like hey like yeah i gave him like the head nod thing like just i'm acting casual on the bench and he's oh he runs over there to me and he just boom picks the bar up like it's oh, no yeah. big thing this dude's a big big dude yeah and yeah. Uh, he racks it and i'm like i'm like kind of laughing because i was like i was like i was not embarrassed for whatever reason so i was like hey bruce thanks man he's like hey no big deal no big deal 
do. Mm. And then uh, he he goes and finishes his thing, and I I uh, bump it down to one thirty five for one more set. Yeah. And then he comes over after that. He's like, let me tell you a funny story. I'm like, here we go. I didn't want a life story, you know. I was like, I'm just trying to work out, but I appreciate him helping me out. Uh-huh. And uh, he's like, I was late night working out. And he was like, and I was doing the same thing as you. I was rapping by myself. Mm. And he was like, and uh, he was like, I was, oh, I forget what, he was doing a lot of weight. And then he yeah. couldn't get it off. He couldn't get it up. Yeah. And then he was like, so luckily I didn't have the collars on the yeah. side. And he yeah. said, so I just dumped it on yeah. one side. Yeah. But he said, because he had so much weight on the other side, yeah, it, whips it, it up. flung the barbell <laughs> into the wall no. and shattered 10 mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, let me tell you, that was the craziest night of my life. Like, he was like, I'll just, I'll never forget that. And I was like, holy shit. I've never heard of it flying into the yeah, wall. Yeah, well, I guess it like threw, I don't know how it happened, but yeah. I guess like the weights came off no, as definitely. it happened, but it yeah. launched it. It's and like a lever. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, holy shit. I mean, that is the ditch it effort if you're doing it by yourself to drop one side, mm-hmm. but you know that once that one side drops, it's going to swing the other side really fast. So you yeah. just prepare to control that i guess that guy wasn't prepared <laughs> or i don't know yeah how much weight he was doing he was up. a big dude but <laughs> yeah holy shit well like ego lifting too not good you know like there was a dude in my gym uh several weeks ago and it's a guy that i know friend mm-hmm. of mine right mm-hmm. and uh he's benching he's benching and he's putting 315 on there mm-hmm. he's benching and it's like pretty clean reps for like sets of three yeah which is what you would do if you're doing strength work you know and so I'm looking at him from across the gym, and I'm like giving him the thumbs up. I'm like, hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as I did that, he puts more weight on. Oh, and God, like, you oh, encouraged okay. it. <laughs> right, right. That's what I feel like. <laughs> yeah. And so then he goes for his next set. I didn't see this. It was another buddy that saw it. Mm-hmm. Goes for his next set, hits his chest. He lifts up, and his right pec just tears. Uh, Boom, uh, pop. Uh, and uh, immediately the weight falls on his chest. We're talking about like over 315 pounds. And uh, two guys that were in the area just happened to see what was going on, run over there. Dang. One dude is like super big and basically just barbell rode the, the weight onto yeah. the rack, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then the guy that tore his pec just ran out. Holy you know? So it was cow, like, holy man. shit. Yeah. You know, he <laughs> ended up being a partial tear, not a full tear. Lucky. Thankfully. Yeah. But again, you know ego gotta mm. check it gotta mm. pay attention gotta be aware don't do more than you than you yeah. uh, shouldn't be doing Dang. you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> you gotta know your own limits holy cow but the same type of thing applies with your dog too you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. if you have like a young dog and you got a dog because maybe you want to run with them don't run that dog prematurely yeah because maybe that's just for you for your desires right mm-hmm. you told people you got a dog because you're going to run with it mm-hmm. maybe that's your ego coming into play and check the ego Make sure their joints are developed properly before you run with them, just as an example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. applies to everything. But make your training as safe as possible. Make your exercise as safe as possible. Minimize all potential risks that could be present, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Another point, warming up properly. Your dog and yourself. You know, this is a big one, that proper warm-ups, because they allow your body to prepare properly for what's coming next. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just go somewhere and do a bout of strenuous exercise with zero warm up. That's not going to help you. Yes. Right. So for dogs, let's say for example, you're going to play like a good game of fetch. I don't recommend just walking out in your backyard and start throwing a ball, right? Yeah. Cause it, maybe your dog was just sitting in your house in the AC. Now you walk outside, maybe it's hot, maybe it's cold mm-hmm. and you just start chucking this ball. Now your dog's going from like zero to a hundred like that that puts their body prone for an injury, mm. right? And in, in place for an injury. Yeah. So what I recommend for dogs specifically warming them up is walking them for like 10 minutes or so before you start the strenuous exercise. And the walk is basically going to start pumping blood throughout their body, getting their joints moving, warming up their joints, getting their body to uh, ready to exert itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing for humans, whether you're going to be running, lifting weights, like training martial arts, doing strenuous work, like yard work, even if you're going to like be working really hard, Mm -hmm. whatever you're thinking you're going to do, always do a proper warm up to get your blood pumping in your body body and prepare your body for work. It's just going to help you in the long run, right? And don't overcomplicate it. It could be super simple, but just getting that blood moving, getting your body warmed up and ready, right? You're Mm -hmm. increasing your body's core temperature for that. Yeah. 
And so one thing I think about is like UPS drivers, right? Those guys are intense. They're driving around. They oh, got they're on their feet all day, bro. On their feet I mean, all they day. They drive, but like if right. you think about it, they're their drive, they stop, they jump out. <laughs> they got this big ass Amazon box that you yeah. do that you ordered, right? With yeah. uh, like a dog treadmill in it. They gotta carry it to your to your porch or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, you're speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's no joke. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. no the stuff that people order. Apparently, uh, I've I've heard that in those box trucks too, they don't have AC. They mm -hmm. just have these fans that are hooked up to the side i'm like dude give the boys some ac so bro. now we're I mean, talking about heat injuries yeah too. they got to stay hydrated yeah. and properly fueled right right exactly. which are they able to because they're probably going non-stop i don't know if they get i don't i don't know how their time is managed i'm assuming if i was a ups driver i'd be making time to eat and fuel I know, but if you're slammed i don't i don't know how it i operates. mean it depends but that, yeah. that's my priority You'd so if i was a ups on go, driver sure. i'd be i'd be prioritizing that somehow mm -hmm. you know have like a cooler with all your yeah, food in definitely it definitely have to bro mm -hmm. but you know they're doing all this crazy work before that day starts i'd probably be warming up you mm -hmm. know getting my before i even get my truck to go on my route i don't know how their work schedule goes but i assume they show up at the the center they load up their truck for that day and then they drive out and they unload everything on their route. That's what I assume that they do. Or it's like, you know, I've seen videos of construction workers, like before they start their jobs for the day, they do like huddles. Yeah. They'll huddle up and they'll do stretches. Right. Yeah. Construction crews, some of them are pretty good about forcing that. Yeah, I think the company makes right. them do I that Right. I know that stuff. because of injury. Yeah. Because yeah, if the yeah. company does that, then it's less injury to their workers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I know that solar crews do that. Solar crews that like install solar panels, mm -hmm. they have like mandated warm ups in the morning mm -hmm. at their huddles. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even if your uh, organization doesn't require that, it's still a good idea. Yeah. And it could be something as simply walking at like a high pace for 10 minutes to get that blood moving through your body, swinging your arms as you're going, yeah. walking like basically just short of a jog to get your cardiovascular working too, mm -hmm. getting everything warmed up and going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Dog trainers too. If you're a dog trainer, you're working with large, powerful dogs, you're having to move dynamically, a good warm up, a good warm up before you start the training day is going to work wonders for your body. You know, and again, it could be something very simple, like a high paced 10 minute walk getting the body pumping yeah you know flexibility work mobility work those can help too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but things to get your body moving things to get your fluids moving that type of stuff but warm-ups are super important yeah super important mm -hmm. don't rush them which brings us to our next point mm -hmm. don't rush mm -hmm. patience is key mm -hmm. take your time take your time a lot of times we make exercise selections with our dogs based on the time we have available right Maybe we're in a rush and we don't have time for our morning walk. So I'm just going to do a five minute fetch session yeah. to wear my dog out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, something like that with ourselves. We might push our limits faster than we should because we're rushing to our perceived finish line. You know, for example, if I go to the gym, I'm late. I only have a shorter time than I'm used to. I might be rushing through my workout mm -hmm. to get things that I think are important done. So you can't rush. You got to take your time. If you rush your dog's training or exercise, you're going to make them more prone to injuries. You're going to make yourself more prone to injuries. So if you're running out of time, what I recommend is keep your warm up as a priority and reduce the time allotted towards your other training or exercise activities. Just reduce that. Yeah. Keep your warm up, reduce the rest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the long run, that's not going to hurt you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. <clears throat> also, next point, use limitation to your advantage. So vary your exercise selections for your dog and yourself. Think about how you can use the least amount of strenuous work possible, but still achieve your desired result. So you're limiting what you can do, but still achieving your result. You're yeah. using that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. So with your dog, this means alternating your exercise and training selections. Let's say that you're wanting to balance out your dog's energy. You have options. You could walk them. You could play fetch. You could play tug. You could run with them. You could bike with them. You could use a treadmill, etc. So with all of these different variations available, you could select to do different ones on different days, yep. right? Instead of doing the same thing every day, because what that does is just repetitive motion on those joints, on those ligaments, 
could put your dog at risk of an injury, yeah. right? So we're going to limit what we're doing and still reap as much benefit as possible. Mm -hmm. Something common that I see a lot of people doing is, again, playing hard games of fetch every single day. I literally used to do this myself with my dogs, and I learned the hard way, right? Because that uh, resulted in hip injuries and back injuries in my dog. It also resulted in an ACL tear in one of my dogs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, thankfully with the ACL tear, you know, we had a really good doctor that did the surgery for that. And, uh, with the hip and back injuries, you know, again, the chiropractor, Dr. Lazota, you know, um, Dr. Rob, he helped us out with that still does it, uh, every so often with me and my dogs to maintain preventative measures on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but again, if you do the same thing with your dog every single day, it's putting your dog at an increased risk of major injury. It's also adjusting your dog's conditioning and endurance level. So if you're doing the same thing every day, like I used to do playing fetch, for example, super hard fetch, um, that's changing that your dog's conditioning and endurance level. It's making it stronger, Yeah, which means pretty soon you're going to have to do more fetch. And more fetch and more fetch and more fetch and more fetch and more fetch. Yeah. To even just meet that level. I remember doing fetch so much that when I would try to walk my dog to balance out their energy, it had zero effect on them mm. because there was so condi they were so conditioned to hard movement, hard work that the walks didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Wouldn't even affect them. Are you saying that for like fetch and uh, high intensity games like that? But obviously you know, walk your dog every day, walk your dog, so every walk day. your dog every day is good to go. Yeah. Right. Because it's a low impact, right? Low impact activity. You're talking about strenuous on the joints, strenuous on the muscles. Yeah. Strenuous, high intense, uh, bouts of exercise every single day. That's going to put you at a greater risk. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Um, but anyway, like I said, I learned that lesson the hard way. So I hope that you learn from my mistakes and don't overwork your dog or overwork yourself and limit your work as much as possible while still achieving your goals, mm -hmm. right? Vary your training and your exercise routines. Mm -hmm. You know, I do like a cyclic exercise regimen now with my dogs. I mean, I walk them every day, at least twice a day, right after breakfast and dinner. Um, but sometimes I'll play fetch every once in a while, not even that often anymore. Yeah. Sometimes I'll, uh, let them go chase things with their nose. Like mm -hmm. basically I'll put out little scent things for them to find. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, sometimes I play tug with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm hiking with them, you know, these types of things. Yeah. Right. So you have a good variable exercise selection to pick, to choose from, yeah. you know, also biking, train your dog to walk next to you on a bike or walk in your area on a bike. Really good thing to be doing as well. Yeah. Um, one other thing, another point is, uh, accidentally cooling off during the middle of exercise can be dangerous. So this could be like when you're warming up your body, you got your body warmed up or your dogs, or your dog is warmed up and you start your physical exercise and then you get distracted. Your phone goes off mm. or you're surfing the socials, mm. right? Something like that. You get distracted. Yeah. You, you fall into the algorithm. You fall into the vortex. That one minute break <laughs> in between your sets turns into five minutes. Right, right. And then you got a line of people waiting for the equipment. You're right, using. something like that. You know, something like that. Yeah. Or your dog's just waiting for you to do whatever next, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're letting your body cool off too much, then you go into another bout of intense exercise. You're now increasing the risk of injury because mm -hmm. your body's cooled off too much. You do your warm up, you start your actual exercise. If you do a cool off in between, then you're increasing the risk of injury. So you got to be conscious of yourself. You got to be mindful of yourself. If you interrupt yourself with your phone or someone else interrupts you, mm -hmm. like a guy telling you a story, oh, yeah. if that was going too long, you might got to say something. Yeah. You know, you yeah. got to have a strategy to identify the interruption and stop the distraction, mm -hmm. right? Don't allow long cool off periods. Yeah. If you're giving you or your dog rest between sets, just limit that rest, right? Rest is good between sets, but too much goes into the cool off zone. Yeah. So for me, my rule is kind of like no more than five minutes maximum mm -hmm. of rest. I generally will do like one to three, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Depending on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, probably less than five minutes is going to be ideal based on the training goals. But five minutes would be the absolute max that I would rest between sets. Yeah. 
So definitely that's been a big one for me because whenever I got injured a couple of years ago with my bicep tear, I was, I found that there was a lot of cool offs between my sets because so, so and so would talk to me yeah. and then that talk would turn into an eight minute talk and then I'm back exercising. Not good. Yeah. You know, not good. Mm-hmm. Um, last point in prevention of exercise discipline. <laughs> we talk about it. Yeah. Oh, we know, we know you like this topic, <laughs> <laughs> but discipline can help you prevent injuries in your dog and yourself. Mm-hmm. We might be more prone to causing injury if we have poor time management. You know why? Because we're feeling rushed to do things, rushed to exercise, rushed to train, rushed to train our dogs. We start cutting corners. Mm -hmm. When we cut those corners, it's not okay. It increases the risk of injury. You know, that goes for our dogs and ourselves. So having a daily routine, having a daily ritual that we follow with our dog, super important because it kind of keeps us on track. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Conducting proper warm-ups, like we said, uh, to, to strenuous exercise. Cycling your training and your exercise, right? Not doing the same thing every single day yeah. with your dog or yourself. Not only is that going to do wear and tear on the same movements, the same muscles every single day, but it's also just going to increase conditioning levels, increase cardio levels. Yeah. That's funny to you? No. <laughs> laughing at jojo she's staring at me (laughs) holy shit prevent wear and tear on the same muscles ligaments and joints feed your dog food that's providing them with enough nutrients to help their body recover feed yourself food yeah that gives you enough nutrients and uh you know things that your body needs to help it recover you know we like the jocko fuel Mm -hmm. that's helping drinking some jocko goes right now that's helping you yeah get better you know those types of things make sure that you rest and recover enough and properly which takes discipline because guess what maybe you need eight hours of sleep seven hours of sleep and then you're up watching netflix Mm, turns out it's 1 a.m by the time you know it you're watching netflix with your girlfriend with your boyfriend just one more just one more more just one more show's so good (laughs) all of a sudden you're seven hours of sleep turned into three. <laughs> Holy cow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that doesn't happen to me. but uh, yeah. I mean, it happened when I was younger. I ain't going to lie. It happens Definitely. to me sometimes. Not three hours of sleep, though, bro. <laughs> I know now I'm like, dude, I got to go to bed. Yeah, man. exactly. But if that does happen, mm-hmm. then guess what? You're cutting some stuff out of that next day to yeah. make sure you can get more sleep. Uh, yeah, you know? for real. Definitely. For real. Maintain <laughs> hydration in yourself and your dog. The Jocko Goes will help you with that. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, prehydrate yourself for days that you know are going to be strenuous. Don't cut corners. That's going to help you in the long run. Yeah. Right. Which takes deliberate action, takes discipline. Right. With the discipline, at least for my dogs, like they, it's kind of like when your dog knows it's time to eat, like Mm -hmm. your dog generally knows if you feed them around the same time, they just know naturally when it's time to eat and they'll be like waiting for you. Right. Yeah. Well, I've kind of had that for working my dogs now mm-hmm. cuz I'll do like my walks mm-hmm. in uh in the late afternoon mm-hmm. and they know mm-hmm. you know it gets know around it gets around 3 4 o'clock mm-hmm. you know they're like they're ready they're looking at me and sometimes I I got more work to do or sometimes mm-hmm. you know I miss the cuz other stuff's going on mm-hmm. and I'm like hey sorry to mess up y'all's schedule today mm-hmm. you know but yeah. like they're they're ready to get after it yeah. you know cuz they like going on walks and stuff yeah or they look forward to that part of the day right you know that kind of stuff does happen. There's going to be small changes day in and day out, but yeah, you just gotta, push it back a couple. Yeah, you got to adapt. You know, you got to cut out yeah, some yeah. stuff that doesn't matter as much in that day. Well, I'm saying that discipline forms habits in your own dogs to where they're wanting to exercise right. and stuff. Right. You know, so it's like a good thing. Yeah, dogs definitely like discipline. Yeah, they definitely, uh, they definitely like do. It. Yeah, yeah. They definitely like it when their owners are disciplined, and they can actually exercise them and train yeah. with them and spend time with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Build that bond. You know who else likes discipline? chickens chickens yeah no they they have a feeding schedule they like to get out of their coupon time (laughs) yeah if you're late they'll start (laughs) start cooking at you (laughs) so anyway discipline definitely going to help you Mm -hmm. but that's kind of like uh some major points on you know preventing injuries right so again we talked about not letting social pressure affect your decisions right we talked about uh, understanding what a normal response to stimuli is and what's not normal. Mm-hmm. We know there's going to be some discomfort 
from exercise, whether it's you or your dog, mm. but reading that properly, responding to that properly, giving rest when needed. We talked about making training and exercise as safe as possible, minimizing all risks as much as possible, right? We talked about warming up properly, mm -hmm. super important. We talked about UPS drivers. We did. Hats off to them. Yeah. Right? Because we all like Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon has their own drivers. I guess any delivery driver. But they use UPS too. Del uh, I mean. FedEx. UPS, FedEx. Postal service. Amazon. DoorDash. Door Uber <laughs> Eats. I mean, come on. Maybe a little bit less discipline. I mean, they the ain't uh, they ain't lifting heavy boxes no, they're not, like, they're not like uh, UPS, yeah, they're FedEx, not Postal Service. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that patience is key, so don't rush yourself. Remember to limit what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Vary your exercise selections, your training selections. Remember that accidentally cooling off can actually be dangerous. So you've got to be conscious about that, and then how discipline can help you. Discipline is definitely going to help you. Yeah. I know probably a, a hard point for me is in the evenings I get some time with my wife, you know, after I'm done working for the day, after I'm done working the dogs, after we put the kids to bed, mm -hmm. after I make sure the chickens are good to go yeah. and I close up their coop, right. you know, we have some time to ourselves. We usually will watch a little bit of uh, TV or something. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll want to watch more. Because yeah. my cutoff time for TV is like 8.30. Yeah. So I'll be like wanting to watch more. But I'll be like, nope, I got to do this so I can get more sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the nights that I don't wake up super early to go to the gym, you know, I'll wait. I might stay up a little bit later with her, watch yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. And then make sure I get my seven to eight hours of sleep that day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, that's going to help you. You know what I'm saying? There's a plan is free. Now let's say for, oh. <laughs> I got you, you know with it. that one, huh? You know it, huh? <laughs> But even if we do everything possible to prevent injuries, we can still get injured. It definitely happens, right? right? So we got a couple principles for that. The first one is when you or your dog get injured, don't get distracted. Injuries can be painful, both physically and psychologically. Mm -hmm. They can really impact you psychologically, right? Injuries will try to steal your attention and your time. And you need to take and maintain control of your attention and time, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you got injured. Maybe you needed that to help you be forced to adapt, mm -hmm. be forced to get more rest and recovery. That's what an injury can do for you. It can force you to adapt. It can force you to change your protocols. It can force you to recover more, to get better. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. whenever any of my dogs or myself got injured my first steps are i immediately accept what happened i try to figure out why did this happen because i want to get better right. so if i can identify why something happened it helps me get better because i'll take preventative action right. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um, what can i do to prevent the injury in the future and then i'm going to do an assessment on my weak points so that then i can figure out my strong points yeah you see what i'm saying so in the year 2020 I tore my bicep because Chris wouldn't help me. Yeah, we, we know <laughs> He wouldn't story. help me move a heavy object, uh -huh. and so my bicep tore. <laughs> like a rubber band. So I had a bicep tear. I had no usage of my left arm for several months, mm -hmm. and I figured out what caused the injury. It was a lack of rest, lack of proper nutrients in my body, and overtraining. Mm -hmm. Working out too much. Yeah. Remember what we said earlier? Limiting mm -hmm. yourself important yeah i learned it the hard way you know the same thing that i had done to my dog years before remember the story of bane getting dehydrated yeah. right heat injury right i also impacted his hips his back from doing too much with him mm -hmm. i did the same thing to myself you know yeah and so i learned uh, a lot from that situation uh, both with my dog and myself mm -hmm. so with the bicep tear i started training my weak points I dialed in my nutrition. I prioritized rest, you know? So when an injury occurs, take immediate action to make that injury your strong point and don't get distracted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a good mindset to have. Definitely. I, I mean, that like just it. helps me with anything in life. If yeah. there's a problem, if there's something that happens, I'm immediately like, okay, why did this happen? Yeah. yeah. What can I do to stop it? Mm -hmm. And how can I get better at this? 
right? Yeah. I mean, literally that injury changed my whole philosophy on what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's probably a better, uh, you know, a lot of people probably just like to, oh, I'm injured. Mm -hmm. You know, like to wallow, I guess you could say. In, uh, pity. And yeah, have a lot of pity on themselves. Yeah. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Oh, right. You know, and then, and then they slack. Because by the time they get better, maybe they're like, fall out of all the habits they used to be definitely in you know what i'm yeah. saying so, so when i change the mindset a little bit yeah when i told my bicep you know i'm like i'm still training so i did what i could you know i can't work the left side of my upper body so what i do i did legs i worked the right side of my body which was super weird yeah you know what i'm saying i did more cardio stuff so you're gonna work what you can work yeah you know yeah you want to stay active yeah um, next point is, should you see a doctor if you or your dog get injured? Should you? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I just, I think it's variable. Depends. Depends on what's going on. Right. But I mean, if it's like a severe injury, yeah. you probably should. Yeah, obviously. A lot of people, you know, maybe they tried to skip out on taking their dog to the vet. Maybe they skip out on going to see a doctor themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the good thing about going to a veterinarian or a doctor is that they can provide useful insight to your injury. They can do x-rays, they can do scans, they can do tests. They can give you a better understanding of how bad you or your dog is injured or what the problem is, mm. right? If you skip out on the veterinarian or doctor, you could have long-term impacts on the health of you or your dog. Yeah. Like if I told my bicep I didn't go to the doctor, I probably would lose a lot of usage of my arm. So don't be afraid of getting multiple opinions from different doctors on what's going on with you or your dog, right? Your dog might need surgery, to repair the injury, maybe not. You might need surgery to repair the injury, maybe not. So you have to use good judgment and don't skip the doctor if a doctor visit is warranted. However, this is also another area where we're balancing. There's a dichotomy with this. You probably don't need to go to the veterinarian or doctor for every little thing that happens, yeah. right? Minor cuts, little scrapes, things like that. These things that you can recover easily at home. Don't underplay the injury, but don't overplay it, you know? So it's literally going to depend on the scenario and what's going on. So make sure that you balance the dichotomy, make good judgment calls. Yeah. The next point I would say when you get injured is that you can train, you can exercise when there is an injury. Mm -hmm. So we've already talked about resting and recovering when an injury occurs. That's definitely true, but it doesn't mean you can't do anything, which is another dichotomy, right? Yeah. Pumping blood throughout your body when there's an injury can be beneficial because that's what's, what that's going to do for you is move nutrients around your body to where they need to go, right? Simple, short, properly paced walks, maybe lower paced, maybe faster paced are going to be great for this. Mm -hmm. Moving the nutrients around your body, getting the blood moving. That's going to push things to your body, to the parts of your body where you need them, right? Yeah. Train around your injury not through your injury, right? If there's anything you're doing that could aggravate the injury, whether it's to your dog or yourself, don't do that. Instead, do the things that you can and be active with things that you can be without agitating the injury itself, right? Let's say your dog got injured playing fetch and it can't run, it might still be able to walk, yeah. even at a very slow pace. Mm. If you tear your bicep, you can still do legs, you can still do cardio, you can still do work on the opposite side of the body from the injury. So yeah. just train smart, Stay you know, light. Yeah. yeah, keep the blood moving. Mm -hmm. The next uh, point I would say is to get better at recovery. You get better at recovery the more you actually practice it. It's a learned skill, learning how much sleep you need after what uh, bouts of exercise you do. Learning how to properly recover yourself and your dog from physical and mental exertion. That's critical, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Constantly being able to self-assess yourself and your dog and making slight improvements in your recovery protocols. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all these different types of things are going to help you. Uh, but the more you practice recovery, the better you're going to be. It's not something that we just naturally learn, yeah. right? Take your time. Take your time, boys. Yep. And then last but not least is going to be, we already talked about it a little bit, but not falling for the pity of others. Mm. Yep. When you get injured, people are going to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Those types of things. <laughs> you poor thing. Right. Mm. Those are totally fine, right? We appreciate it when people say that. Mm. But you don't want to live on that. 
Yeah. I've seen people live on that pity. They choose to live in a perpetual cycle of the pity of injury. They always stay injured because of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They let an old injury live on in their mind. They let the fear of an old injury haunt them. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let the pity from others keep you down. Yeah. Don't let your own pity keep you down, right? So keep your mind in the game. Don't fall into the pity trap. Mm -hmm. A mentality that I have unfortunately seen before is something like, I got injured. Things were never the same after the injury. I can never achieve where I used to be or where I want to be because of the injury. Yeah. So I might as well not even put forth the effort. And that's wrong. That's dead wrong, right? Don't fall into the pity trap. Be Go ready. Yeah. Get after it, right? Put your mind into gear so that you know, hey, I'm going to make a plan to overcome the injury. I'm going to adapt as needed. I'm going to get better than I was or my dog was before. I'm mm -hmm. going to train those weak points like we talked about. Yeah. Go you know listen to the White Podcast <laughs> if you want to talk about not feeling sorry for yourself. Right. Right. There's a lot of people out there that have been through a lot of different stuff, crazy stuff. Yeah. And uh, they're pushing through it, which means we can too. Yeah. Literally, it's your mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So those are kind of my major points for if you get injured, what do you do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But overall, the main thing is we need to be active against injuries. That means being aware of potential injuries, minimizing any risk of injury, staying hydrated, right? Remember that story? Yeah. Making sure you have proper nutrients available in your daily eating, in your dog's daily eating, having nutrient-dense meals, yeah. right? For humans, you know, I always recommend something along the lines of the vertical diet, which focuses on macronutrient and micronutrients. Yeah. For dogs, a raw diet, a hybrid of raw diet, you know, mm -hmm. something that's nutrient dense. Yeah. Warming up before you do strenuous activities, super critical, right? Training your flexibility, training your mobility, not rushing yourself, right? Taking your time. Yep. Using strict form, using strict range of motion. You know, I see people in the gym, unfortunately, they're bench pressing, they're going like, you know, not even halfway down. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, just bench 225, <laughs> right? And it's like, dude, you didn't even get it to your chest, full range of motion. Or the dudes on leg press who put all the weights on and they go <laughs> yeah. barely moving their right. legs. And they're like, oh, yeah, I crushed it. <laughs> it's better for your body. It's better for your joints if you get that full range of motion in. Yeah. Right? If injuries do occur, remember, accept them and make your weak points your strong points. Mm-hmm. Right. Chiropractic care can be a great preventative measure. I use a chiropractor for myself. Obviously I use one for my animals. Mm -hmm. So that can be a great preventative measure, especially for your spine and your nervous system, you know, but yeah. the mobility, I mean, that's like, you know, being able to move through different ranges of motions, having that flexibility, yeah. that's critical, mm -hmm. you know? So hopefully you guys got something out of this discussion today. Hopefully it made you think about some things you haven't thought before in relation to injuries. But real quick, before we wrap up, I do want to say, Pack Talk Podcast is sponsored by Canine Revolution Dog Training. So if you need dog training, you can hit us up, let us know in the uh, link below what you're looking for, what you need. We'd be happy to help you. We've got Canine Revolution Apparel also mm -hmm. sponsoring the podcast. That's You can go to Amazon at the link below. You can get you a good-to-go shirt. You can get you dog shirts. You can get you Iron Revolution workout shirts oh yeah you can get guinea shirts and chicken shirts all the above coffee cups coffee cups rain, rain jackets oh yeah good to go we're also uh, proud to be affiliated with origin usa and jocko fuel because we support america we support ourselves jocko fuel that's giving your body clean nutrients that your body needs no fillers no bad ingredients you can use code singer 101 on either one of those websites for 10 percent off we also have our upcoming, probably getting released here in about a month, Canine Revolution Dog Training NFT Digital Certificate Program. Hell yeah. We're working with local businesses to bring benefits to our alumni. We're working with Black Force MMA, where you can train your jujitsu, you can train your martial arts, which if you're training jujitsu, you're also training flexibility, mobility, because of the ways you have to move your body. Mm -hmm. You're also training your mind. Oh yeah, big time. We're uh, working with DT Mobile Detailing. David, he's going to keep your car in check. <sighs> your vehicle in check. Yeah. Your vehicle ready to rock and roll, mm -hmm. right? Preventative maintenance on your vehicle, minimizing risk of an injury 
to your vehicle, interior and exterior. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All is well pets in Somerville. We're also proud to be working with them, getting that nutrient-dense food for your dog's body, right? They might have some human snacks in there. Uh, maybe, maybe Or just not. eat the dog food. Or just eat the dog food. <laughs> I mean, it's nutrient-dense. Yeah. It's good to go. <laughs> Also working with the Velasquez company, they're going to help keep your house Mm -hmm. preventative measures in check to reduce injury to your house. They can do drywall repair. They're going to do painting. They can put up fencing for you. Mm -hmm. Ask them. They can probably help you with it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We're also working with Sharpshooter Pressure Wash, which is the exterior, keeping that house preventative clean. Prevention, cleanliness, right? The owner of Sharpshooter Pressure Wash, technically our trainer, Chris's brother, technically, technically, right? Everybody technical, good to go. (laughs) Right. We got Carolina premier pest control and Carolina premier home inspection. Again, preventative maintenance, Mm -hmm. prevention of injury to your home, to your homestead, to the injury of your uh, bones of your home. Termites. That's right. Termites, Mm -hmm. other pests. Yep. Also the home inspections, keeping the bones of your home. Good to go. Yeah. Right. We're also going to be partnering with Cane Bay Chiropractic. That's your chiropractic care for yourself. Speaking of bones. There you go. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. Dr. Rob's probably coming on board with the animal chiropractic. So we're working on some other deals, some other partners, but that's what we got so far. If you guys enjoyed the podcast, please rate us. Please review us on your favorite podcasting platform. Definitely helps us. Oh, we yeah. definitely appreciate the feedback too. Mm-hmm. You know, please, if please. you need uh, dog training help, you can check out our YouTube channel, Canine Revolution Dog Training. Oh, yeah. You can got a lot of videos on there that can help you out. You can give us feedback on what videos could help you and your dog in the comments on those videos. And we'll do our best to make a video yep. that directly is uh, responding to you. Mm-hmm. Also, we have Pack Talk Podcast YouTube channel. What content do you want to see on there? You guys let us know. We we'll might be watching this on the channel right now. Maybe you're watching it on the Shout channel. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Here's, <laughs> here's one for you right here. Here's one to you. My job Cheers. Is almost Cheers empty. to them. Right? <laughs> Ah, drinking the Jocko Goat. Right? Mine's empty. If you're watching the podcast, you should probably have a go with you so we can drink together. Yeah, right? well, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> cheers. Well, virtually. cheers, you guys. Yeah. All right. But anyway, thank you guys for your support. And until next time, this is Pack Talk Podcast.